Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Joyful Jesse. You may or may not know that we experienced a missed miscarriage about a month ago and we had a DNC procedure. I would like to share with you guys what our experience was during the procedure, the before, the during, and then the after, now that we are a month past it. If you are watching this video because you have suffered a recent loss, I want to let you know that I am so sorry for your loss. It is very challenging and very difficult and I know your pain. So know that you have somebody here praying for you in this process. I hope that this video can kind of give you a little bit of an idea of the whole DNC procedure. This is not my first DNC. I had another DNC over this past summer that was not related at all to a pregnancy. My first DNC was because I had these little polyps and I was having a lot of bleeding beforehand so I was given the option if I wanted to do a biopsy or I could do the DNC which they would scrape the entire lining of the uterus remove all the polyps and still get to test to see if these polyps were benign or not and it would fix the problem that I was having. The second DNC was because of our missed miscarriage. I'd have to say that both experiences were different from the preparation to where it took place to the recovery afterward. It was different, not just because of the emotional aspect of it, but also the physical aspect of it has been different. Recovery is different for everybody. So I am just sharing with you guys my personal experience. If you guys have not yet seen the video I posted up about our miscarrying story and how we found out, I will link it up on the right hand corner. I go into details there. But long story short, we went for our first prenatal visit at seven weeks, six days and found out that there was no heartbeat and that the baby had stopped developing at five weeks, five days. A week later, I went in at eight weeks, six days and it was confirmed with the second ultrasound that the baby yet was was still at five weeks, five days, and had not developed. At that point, it was confirmed that the baby had died three weeks before the second sono, and I had this DNC procedure done at nine weeks, two days. So the preparation for this particular DNC was different than the one I had had in the summer. The nurse did call me a day before the DNC, pretty much just told me what I needed to do. They told me to sleep in fresh clean sheets, which they hadn't told me that on the first one. They told me to take a shower with an antibacterial soap called Heavy Cleanse or Heavy Cleanse, which I didn't have to do before either. Besides the no eating for six hours before surgery, they told me at four hours, hours before I reported to the hospital, they wanted me to drink a bottle of Gatorade that was not red. I was like, oh, okay. Because for my other one, they, they had told me not even water. For this one, they were very specific. I had to report to the women's hospital, which is where I had had my two previous children, unlike my other one where I had to go to a outpatient surgical center. Once I checked into the hospital, they sent me up to the labor and delivery floor, and this is where this was going to be taking place. When I went in, the hospital staff, I have to say, was amazing. I was very, very distressed and they handled me really well. I mean, I have to say, I, I have to give them a top notch. I've heard stories that people have said that this was not the case for them. For me, like these people, I think, have been trained on how to deal with these particular circumstances. They were very sympathetic. The nurse was very sweet. You know, they gave me a little lavender thing. I, that lavender scent will never go away from my brain because she was like, here, smell this. This will help you calm you down a little bit. So from the moment we arrived to the room where they're pretty much prepping you for the procedure and the procedure, we were there for approximately, I would say 45 minutes to an hour. And the nurse was, continuously checking in on us. They were checking on vitals. They told us, do you guys have any questions? They put on my IV. The doctor then came in, checked in on us, asked us if we had any questions. The anesthesiologist came out there, explained everything that he was going to be doing and asked us if we had any questions. And the same people that were there were the 
care team that was also in the OR. So the anesthesiologist, the doctor, the nurse, and then and another nurse. They were they were the ones that were with me. They brought me in to the OR, and then they were br they brought me out, and then that one nurse that was initially with me with the whole lavender. She was also with me till the very end. She was the one that wheeled me downstairs and made sure I got into my car okay. Throughout all this time, Sean was with me up to the point that they took me to the OR. So by the time it was time for me to be moved to the OR, our nurse came and told us, oh, you guys can do your hugs and whatnot because we're gonna be leaving here in a minute. So we did that. So then the anesthesiologist wheeled me into the OR in the bed. And he, you know, along the way was telling me, I'm so sorry that you have to experience this. And my response was like, me too. I remember arriving at the OR. And this OR was a lot more cozier than the one I had had my other DNC in. I was still very alert. And they parked my bed next to another bed. And they had me transfer from this bed to this bed. And I laid down and I was crying and I fell asleep. And then I woke up in the recovery room crying because it was real. Then the nurse came in and checked on me. She then gave me like this postpartum underwear and a pad and took me to the bathroom because before they release you, they have to make sure that you can use the restroom. So once the nurse got me back onto my bed from the bathroom and I was dressed. Then after that, they gave me something to eat. I couldn't eat any crackers or anything because of my gluten intolerance, but they did give me jello and I was able to keep that down. The nurse did go get Sean and Sean came in. They didn't rush us at all. They gave us our discharge instructions and they went over with me and Sean how to pretty much recover. The nurse did tell us that I was given an, an antibiotic and I should be on the lookout for the next four to six weeks to make sure I don't develop an infection that usually like causes diarrhea and whatnot. So I've been on the lookout for that. She told me to take either a probiotic or eat yogurt that has that bacteria in it. So I have been consistently taking a probiotic. She also did recommend that I take a stool softener. I didn't, I wish I would have because it was a little painful to use the bathroom for a couple of weeks. Then um, she told us, you know, for the next three weeks, you can't take baths, you can't go in the pool, you can't have anything up in your canal. Cause I guess the uterus needs to close up. So they don't want any infections in there. And she gave me a little crocheted um, keepsake that she told me was done by moms who had also suffered a loss. When we were ready to go, I was put in a wheelchair just because of the risk of falling and the anesthesia. The nurse wheeled me downstairs and helped me into my car and then we went home. So the whole process from the moment I checked in at six in the morning through the DNC to the recovery to the moment we left the hospital, we left at nine o'clock. So the whole process took about three hours in totality. Then I came home and one of the things that they said is to rest. So I pretty much was resting in my room for the next three or four days. I didn't really have much bleeding. For my first DNC that I had had, I had a typical cycle bleeding. For this one, I barely had any bleeding up until the point I went back to work. When I went back to work and I was up on my feet a lot, then I did experience light bleeding, not bad. I, I had spotting for like two and a half weeks. Now, something that was available for me, I don't know if this is something that's available for everybody, but for this particular procedure, everything that they did was put up in the patient portal. So unlike my other one, the other one, the only thing I got was test results that all the tissue they had removed from my uterus for the first one was benign. For this particular one, they actually had in detail everything that was done from the moment they took me in to the times that, that they administered anesthesia to when they gave me the antibiotic to the size of instrument that they used to dilate my uterus to the technique they used to remove the the tissue everything to the moment that i was awoken everything i guess to me reading it was helpful because it was almost like a third confirmation i had my first one my first sano i had my second sano and the blood work also confirmed things and then i had the dnc report to confirm that everything was pretty much 
what it was said. And so like the DNC, they confirmed that this was a missed miscarriage, that the size of my uterus being at an eight to nine week range and the size of the baby being at the five weeks, five days range. So all of that was confirmed in that report. So it was also sent out for um, testing and I did receive the report. I don't understand what is that. So I need to ask my doctor, like what does all that information mean? Because it's in medical language and I don't understand what is that. So I need to talk to him and ask him, what exactly does that test result show? Does it show that, you know, there was something wrong with the baby? Does it show like what, what exactly were they testing for? So I need to double check in with him. So about a week after my DNC, I did receive a phone call from the doctor's office and it was a nurse checking in to see how I was doing. They asked me kind of like about my emotional status, how I was feeling. And they also asked me about my physical status. And they did explain to me that my HCG level were high initially and that the doctor wants to continue monitoring my ACG levels until they go back down to the non-pregnancy status which is a zero to five so I have been going weekly to get blood work done at the doctor's office they gave me two options they told me I could either have it at an outside lab where I could have it done at the doctor's office I chose a doctor's office because I know when I get blood work done in there, I'm in and out within 10 to 15 minutes. It's so quick. So I opted to go into the doctor's office to do it. Plus in a weird kind of way, I have found going there has been helping and facing like things. The times that I have gone in there, I either come across somebody who's expecting and I congratulate them and I am happy for them. Um, and another one, I found a friend that was there for another reason and I was able to share my story with her. So in a weird kind of way, I feel like it's been a good thing that I'm continuously choosing to go to the doctors. I have had blood work drawn, one, two, three, three, I'm, I'm on my third one, I think. The first one was before my DNC, and that one, my ACG levels were at 137,000. Later on, my hormones were down I think to 1700 then my hormones went down to 900 and something so it seems like after my procedure they've been going down by 50% every time so yeah this is my fourth time so the way it works is I get my blood work done and several days later a nurse calls me to let me know what the levels were and what the doctor wants me to do next. Initially, when the nurse first called me, she said, depending on where my levels are at, the doctor is either gonna want weekly or bi-weekly. And in my case, the doctor wanted them weekly. So I go every week. It's part of the process. Didn't end with the DNC. That's how it worked for me. For my previous DNC, there were no follow-up calls. I didn't have to go into the doctor's office for anything. That's where my body is currently at, at a month afterwards. I'm feeling much, much better. You know, my body is returning little by little to what it was beforehand. And I'm feeling stronger emotionally, which is a very, very good thing. I feel like out of this whole process, there's a physical aspect, but you know, the DNC didn't really involve much physical pain. Like it really didn't. The emotional aspect of it, is way stronger than any physical pain that you feel. When I initially opted for the DNC, having the experience before for the DNC and knowing that the procedure in itself wasn't that bad, that's why we, you know, we opted for that because the idea of me waiting till whenever the body would start expelling the baby out could happen anywhere. It could happen at school, it could happen at church, it could happen anywhere was just really dreadful for me. So anyways, that is it for this video. That's where we are at currently at four weeks after the procedure, a month after the procedure. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.